can I go ahead and call a witness a liar during their pretrial deposition? You want to know the answer? Come join me on this walk through the neighborhood as I tell you the answer to that question. Hi, I'm Jerry Ojinski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. I will tell you that there are much better ways to do it than to outright call this witness a liar during the course of her pretrial question and answer session known as a deposition. In case you don't know, this takes place before trial. It typically, pre-COVID times, would take place in the attorney's office. So now, during the course of a lawsuit, whether it's a medical malpractice case, or an accident case, or a wrongful death case, each side has an opportunity to question witnesses who are parties to the lawsuit. Now, during the course of this question and answer session, the answers that the witness gives represent their sworn testimony. If I go ahead and come right out and say, hey, Mrs. Jones, you're a liar. I don't believe anything you have to say. You know what's going to happen? Absolutely nothing. The witness is going to get very defensive. The witness will be offended by the fact that I've now called her a name, an offensive name, and now I don't believe a word she says. There are much better strategies and much better things that I can do to establish the fact that this witness is a liar. I never actually have to call her out and say, Mrs. Jones, you're a total liar. I don't believe a single thing you've said. Instead, what I'm going to do is establish many contradictions. I'm going to establish many things that contradict facts of this case. She says one thing, my client says another. The records say one thing, she says another. I don't have to come right out and say, Mrs. Jones, you're a liar. Instead, I merely have to point out many, many inconsistencies between other witnesses, other records, other evidence, and what this witness is talking about. By showing many inconsistencies, it becomes quite clear, quite evident, not just to me, but to the defense attorney as well, that what this witness is saying is not believable, is not truthful. And you know what? I never ever have to come right out and accuse her of being a total liar. So why is that? Why would that be beneficial to me? During the course of this pretrial question and answer session, I don't have to go ahead and call her a liar. That information will be quite evident for anybody reading the transcript. Now, it'll also be evident to the defense attorney reading the transcript. And importantly, when we go ahead and have conversations, settlement discussions, that will play a key part in the settlement discussions by explaining how this person, this witness was a total liar and was being less than truthful. Now, how does this work at trial? At trial, I will ask the witness many of the same questions that I've asked during the pretrial questioning. And during trial, I will establish many of these inconsistencies. And now you might be asking, okay, during a trial in front of a judge, in front of a jury in court, wouldn't it be important to go ahead and point out to the jury that this woman is a total liar, that she's being less than truthful, that she can't be trusted? The answer is yes and no. You see, by establishing all of these contradictions, the jury is going to know immediately that she's not being truthful. The jury is going to understand that there are many factual disputes and it doesn't sound like this woman can be believed. I don't actually have to come right out during the course of trial when I'm questioning witnesses and say, hey, ladies and gentlemen, look at this lady. She's a total liar. That's who you're going to hear from next. No, 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 I don't have to do that. Let the jury reach that conclusion on their own. It's a much more powerful way for the jury to reach that conclusion and what it means if they can reach that decision on their own. Now, I will tell you something else. If I have Mrs. Jones up on the witness stand and I'm now questioning her and now I call her out as being a liar, if she's an 80-year-old lady, she's going to be very, very sympathetic. Now, how do I look if I call her a liar? I look like an ogre. I look like a horrible person to call this elderly woman out as a liar. Even if I have the goods on her, even if I can show that she has inconsistent statements that clearly show she's being less than truthful, guess what? The jury may take it out on me and my client because I'm not being very nice and polite to this elderly woman. In addition, if I were to call her out while she's on the witness stand, she has the ability to go ahead and try and explain away all of her answers. She has the ability to go ahead and explain to the jury why her answers are inconsistent. And you know something? I don't want to give her that opportunity. Her attorney can go ahead and question her and ask her questions about what she did and why and have her explain away those answers. That's fine. But I am not going to do that. I don't want to give her the opportunity to go ahead and explain anything. 
So you might be asking yourself, is there ever a time where I can go ahead and call this witness a liar? The answer is yes, there is. You know when it is? It's during closing arguments, when the witness is not on the witness stand anymore, when no one can talk back to me, when no witness can go ahead and explain anything. I can now show to the jury and give them my own conclusions and interpretation and ask them to reach the same conclusion and interpretation by showing all of these inconsistencies. And if I really wanted to, I could characterize her testimony as being totally untruthful, as being a liar. But you know what? Many times I don't even have to do that. Why? It's because the jury already knows it. So why do I share this quick information with you? I share it with you just to give you a sense of what really happens in these medical malpractice cases, these accident cases, these wrongful death cases here in the state of New York. You know, I realize you're likely watching this because you want to see the beautiful scenery. No, I realize you're likely watching this because you likely have questions or concerns about your own matter. Well, if your matter did happen here in New York and you have not yet started a lawsuit, but are thinking of doing so and have questions about your own matter, what I invite you to do is pick up the phone and call me. You know, I answer questions like yours every single day and I'd love to chat with you. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. That's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a wonderful day.